All right, everybody. Thanks for joining this afternoon. Um, my name is Joe Castello. I'm the art director here at Great Dane Graphics. And what we're going to be covering today is working with our print cut files for in Corel Draw. So first, I'm going to start off, give you a little overview, like what Great Dane is, what we offer, the different types of artworks, and then we're going to download one of the images. We're going to bring it into Corel Draw and set it up, add some type to it, and set it up for print cutting. So you can send it right to your cutter. So to begin, uh, again, Great Dane Graphics here. We create artwork. Our job basically is to make yours a lot easier. We don't just create just artwork. We create artwork for multiple types of production. So we add new artwork every week. This is some of our new ones. I thought I clicked it. Okay, internet just supposed to be running slow today. So real slow. Okay. So as I was saying, we create uh, artwork and we have set it up for multiple types of production so that you don't have to just get the artwork and then figure out a way to you know, get it to your print cutter or to your direct to garment or your screen print or whatnot. So every image, as you see here, it is represented over here on the left. Um, on the right side here are the list of the different types for different types of production. So we'll start with the digital printing one. This is, would be simple PNG file. We use this for direct to garment, die sublimating, pretty much anything where you don't really need to separate it or worry about cut lines. I mean, anything digital, flyers, doesn't matter. Uh, this is the print cutting file. This is one we're going to be using, uh, working on today. As you can see here, this is, uh, it looks a bit different from the digital one. You see there's an extra edging added onto that. Well, that's how we set these up for print cutting, is we actually go in there and we create a bleed along the edge of the image. Now, obviously, you're not going to want to cut. It doesn't cut along this edge here, but the reason we put the bleed is the biggest problem we run into that uh, print cutters have with uh, when they're trying to print something like a raster image like this is that no matter how they put the cut line around the edging, you're, all, you're gonna get like these little white pieces of the material peeking out here and there just because it's not 100% perfect. So what we do is before we uh, put the images on the site is we go in and we basically pull like two, three pixels of the edge of the image and just push it right out to the edge. We, we make it about, let's say it's about half an inch. I mean, you don't, if you were using it, these come at full size at 14 by 14 inches. But, and you wouldn't, if you were doing this yourself and you were going to keep it at 14 by 14, you don't really need to go this far out to create a bleed. We go this extensively out because we try to anticipate everything you guys might run into, such as, you know, hey, what if they wanted to make three and a half by three and a half inch stickers of this? Well, you'd need the bleed to be a bit thicker because when you shrink it down, it's a cover. So we go ahead and we make this bleed, and when it cuts out, we get nice crisp edging. So, and that's the type of file we're going to be working on, working with today. But uh, we also have a screen print version. This is if any of you also do screen printing. It's pre-separate. Actually, let me go to the details on this one. It's uh, pre-separated for you. We give you a print spec sheet. We tell you the ink, the mesh, the angle, the line, everything so you can get a good print. You don't have to print everything for colors. Like you can see here, it says five, five, six. Every image here you can print as a one or two color. You don't, because I know that if any of you are screen printers, I know that's a big issue with your customers is how many screens are you going to charge them for. So, but again, you could import this right into Corel Draw, add your type. We'll actually be doing another class showing how to work with this stuff uh, down the road. Uh, you got your ink laser printer. This is just basically to make sure it all has hard edging. This would be something for your, like your OK data printer, you know, where it's you need that hard edges, you're going straight to a transfer. Now, screen print black line. This is just your typical, oops, your typical vector artwork. Black line, you know, nodes, everything. This is what we've all seen and been working with for since time began. So we also have your, I'm sure if you're a print cutter, you probably also do vinyl cutting. So we actually do a vinyl cut version of every image. We actually do two versions, actually. Um, we have the, we call this one the vinyl cut detailed. Reason being is it's 10 inches. Uh, large because, you know, for larger areas, and but as you can tell, it is different from like just the regular vector one. So, yeah, that was, for example, like this would be a nightmare for a cutter. I mean, you'd be weeding every single piece of straw out of here, and I don't even want to know how long that would take. So the reason we do, we dumb it down, we simplify it, and into our vinyl cut versions where it's like one, two, three, four pulls, you're done. You know, and we give more area because you want more material, that kind of thing, you know, especially you like glitter flake and things like that. So the 10-inch one, and then there we actually do a smaller 3-inch one. 
where we've got even it's less detail because it's got to be smaller. This right here would be one pole, but this is like three and a half inches tall. So you know you can't have that much detail in there. The, the blade's only going to cut so much. So we simplify it down, make it ready to go. One cool feature too on our site is that we do have, you can see over here, some of these things have customizer. Um, reason being you don't see them on a print cutting or the screen print is because it, it's a, we're gonna have to, you have to do tweak it a bit more to customize it, so the design doesn't really work. But something like a digital printing, your customers wants to show you what they want, you can come in here, add your own type. You know, scale it, color it. You know, add a color to it, and then you can download it as a PDF or a uh, PNG, sorry. So, so nice feature. We have two basic, there's two plans. There's uh, the uh, stock art plan, which gets you all the artwork, uh, all the different various versions, everything like that. And then uh, that runs $18.99 a month, and then you have the combined one with uh, stock art and embroidery in case you do any embroidery. And just to get show up for this class, I do want to point this out. Why is it moving so slow? Yeah, there you go. Now you can see like the combined is $31.99, $18.99. So as I was saying, just because you guys are here taking this class with me today, uh, we actually do have a special offer for you to try it out. I'm going to leave this up for a little bit here. This is a code that's going to give you one month free off the site. So you'll you get 200 downloads a month, which usually is plenty for, for the way we work. So that you just need to select the plan, enter this code in when you check out, and you'll see your total go to zero, and you'll get a free month on us. Uh, it does expire. You do have to the 28th, it's about the end of the month here, to use it. So like I said, I'll just leave it up here for a little bit so you can write it down. I'll bring it up again later at the end of the class. All right. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this. All right. So let's get back to what we're here to do. So on our site, we do have a search engine. We're going to go get a piece of artwork to download here. We're going to talk about how all that works. Uh, so let's spend football season. We're going to, this is the, this is the image we've been using for our class series that we've been doing here so far. And we're using the same image and creating kind of the same layout just so if you've taken some of our other classes that uh, you can see how each version, each production version of the artwork functions and looks and how what you can get out of it. So come on. There we go. Okay. So let's go down. So as you can see here in the search engine, you're seeing multiple versions of the same thing. The reason being is we can filter this down uh, over here on the left side, filter it to just stock art, filter embroidery, and the various methods. So just to, we're just going to click on the print cut and let it cycle itself through real quick. All right. There's our fire image, and you can see everything's the bleed. It's just showing our presentation. So. We come here and all right. So we're already on. We got the print cutting. We'll just click the download button. That's wants to charge me to download. I want to do that. Click yes. All right. Now here's where one thing we're coming into something here that we it's definitely on our top list of questions we get. People who call in going, okay, I I went to the site. I downloaded your artwork and I don't know where it is. I can't open it. I don't know where it is. So here's the thing. All our files come to you as zip files. What a zip file is, it's a way to compress so the file isn't as large, and it also is a way to protect it from corruption when it's you know, being transferred back and forth you know, through the Internet. The best metaphor I can tell people on how to, because a lot of people don't know what a zip file is, it's like a suitcase. You know, you don't, when you're going on a trip, you just don't grab your clothes and, you know, carry a big pile of them and walk on the plane. No, you're going to lose some, they're going to get dirty, ruined, fall apart, that kind of thing. So you put them in a suitcase. You zip that suitcase up, it keeps your clothes and your stuff safe as you're traveling. The zip file is the same way. It's like putting the file in a suitcase, we zip it up, and it protects it while it's transferring from one machine to another. So now, PC users, I cannot express this enough. Please pay attention when you download anything, even if it's our files or your files, you need to pay attention to where you're downloading it to. Right now in Internet Explorer, it, it usually asks me where I want, do I want to save it, do I want to save as. I always click save as because I like to make sure I know where it's going. I like to usually have it go to my desktop. So yep, we're on my desktop. So I'll click save. 
if you are using, I'll close this, if you are using other internet browsers like Firefox, uh, you know, Safari is just Mac, but uh, Google, you know, Google's browser, all that stuff. Some of them treat them differently. So like Firefox, I know, will shoot it right to whatever your pre-designated folder and downloading is. Typically, I'll show you here, your default for downloading when you're downloading is your downloads folder, but that might not be the case. I With Internet Explorer, I like that it gives me the option to click save. I can tell it I want it on my desktop, and boom, it's right there on my desktop. So just one thing to pay attention to because it's just just to watch out for because we do get a lot of people who they get lose the files. So when we're on our desktops here too, it is zip. You can see a little zipper on it. So here there's one, there's two ways that you're going to have function on how to unzip it. If you've got a more current version of Windows, like 7, 10, I, this is completely, all you got to do is double click. Just double click it, opens the folder up. We give you two versions of the print cut file. So we give you the Corel Draw file version and an EPS version. Basically, if you're an Illustrator user, you're going to use the EPS. We're working in Corel today, so we're going to use Corel Draw. So you click, drag it to your desktop, and just drop it there. Now, if you're on a very old version of Windows, like <laughs> I've had, I think somebody recently was still in Vista and, and somebody was on 98, you have to do things differently. You might even have to download some sort of unzipping software, like JZip is one that I know of. Um, or you are simply left-click and go to Extract All. So that would be, that's one of two ways to unzip it. So, okay, so we got our file downloaded. Actually, there is one other thing. Let's go back to this site, too, just to, that's Corel. I do want to show you how you can change colors in Corel, and I want to use something different other than this. So let me download one more image here real quick because the site is running slow, and I don't want to risk it. So or the Internet's running slow. I don't know. I just want to get everything downloaded. So we're going to go select one more file, the print cut version. Download. Yep. There we go. Save as on our desktop. Click save. All right. Okay. Now we can get back on track. So with our print cut version file here, let's go ahead and open it up in Corel Draw. File. Open. Ready to put it on our desktop. So it loads right in. All right. So what you're going to see here real quick is, as you can see, is the bleed here. And uh, now I like to have my object manager open here. It makes it a little bit easier to grab things and move them around. You can create more layers, so you can just be turning eyeballs off and on. Trail draws a tendency to just lump everything in one layer, um, which can be problematic. In Illustrator, any object has an eyeball, and you can just click it off and on. Not the case in Corel. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to just delete this just so you can see the cut line. So we've already got the cut line around it, so let's zoom in here. And as you can see, I just it's all one curve, so because the holes have been knocked out, you know, we got the nodes. It's already set. Now, you are going to have to double check this. We do name these cut contours. It all depends on your rip there for your, you know, for your printer there to make sure you got the right color, you got the swatch named correctly. Um, I'll show you where we can do that too because where I like to start is with, we'll bring him back. Uh, I like to start with actually when we add type, I like to create my color swatches first. I don't like to be picking random colors off of this. I like to have them all set. I know which what colors I'm going to use and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate our colors first. So we want to go to Windows, Color Palette, Palette Editor. Oh, there it is. All right, in the Palette Editor, sometimes, usually it's set to Document Palette, which is the one you want to be in. Sometimes it's set to Default, like I think the last time I opened this up, it was on some other palette. So just click the drop-down menu, find your Document Palette, and there you go. Now, see, this as of right now came in as unnamed color. So what you would want to do is make sure is name it what it needs to be. So we, 
hit the wrong button there. Sorry. Color palettes. Palette editor. All right. So let's add some more colors in here. I know for my type, I'm going to want to use just like the. I like to use this. I'm going to use blue. So click OK. This it doesn't need to be a spot color right now, uh, or at all. So I'm going to. I'm even going to put white and black in there just because I want everything on the same palette. I like to be organized. That's just me. You can you can do this any way you like. This is merely the process I like to do. So we'll add a yellow and a black. So we'll click on yellow. Yeah, click OK. And we add a black. And click OK. All right, so I got my color palette going. As you can see, my color palette is on the bottom down here, which is where I like it. Now, sometimes your color palette might not even be here off to the side or at the bottom. You might have to open it up. To find that, you want to go to Windows, Dockers, and go down to Color Palette Manager. I've already got a check mark in front of it, so I'm going to turn it off. And then I'm going to turn it back on real quick. And you can see my Color Palette Manager here. It's got all sorts of them. Like I said, the document palette is the main one I want to use. So like if it's turned off and you don't see these colors, click the eyeball, boom, pops right back in. Yours might, depending on your setting, might pop over here or down here. So let's go back to Object Manager. Okay, Let's zoom out to Page because we're going to want to move some stuff around here to make room for our type. So let's select both of these. Oops. Click the wrong button. Grab both. Slide it up to the top here, make room. Perfect. All right, so let's generate our type. We're just going to go with Jackson High Tigers like we've done before. There. High. Let's stretch it out. Actually, let's get a different font. I like to use something nice and thick and blocky. And now we'll kind of size it to where we want. It's about good. All right, let's pull up the uh, type window here to adjust our type a bit because uh, things that need to be pushed together, pulled apart. So let's go to text. Oops, looks like I already had it over there. So I'll go back, just click it again. Text, text properties. Okay, in here, here's where we can mess with our type. Like I want to actually make everything justified to the right. So I could simply come up to the paragraph here, just about right. There we go. And we got our kerning and uh, our spacing. Uh, I don't. I get picky with these things. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I just like to get it to where I like it. So you know, I don't want this letter spread apart. I want to squeeze them in a little bit more. So that's a good. Then we got the line. This is. These two are way too far apart. I want to tighten this up a bit. So I'm gonna go over here. Click this to where I like it. Now you can tap the arrows here, but there's another feature too. If you want to slide it around, is if you get the icon, if your mouse cursor right in the middle here and see that bar, you can go like this, up and down, up and down, and you play with it like that. Same thing down here. If you get that icon in here and go, you know, you can play with it that way. All right. So before I forget, the first thing I want to do before I start creating outlines and things like that is I want I want to take this out of text mode because you're going to need it to be a, a curve in the end any, regardless. So you can do that a couple ways. You can just go text, uh, convert to curves, or I like to right click. You know, just right click on it, convert to curves right there. Boom. There we go. You see it up here in our objects manager. It's filled with black. So now to create multiple outlines, we're going to do a do a bunch. We're going to do a bunch here, and uh, so what I like to do is to, you know, we can create one stroke on this, but you know, if we're going to do multiples, we're going to actually have to copy and paste that. So you can go edit, copy, edit, paste. Quick key is Control C to copy, and then Control V, E, and then I'm actually want to do it three times or twice to have three total. Boom. And you can see them up here. Obviously, this works like layers in Photoshop. What's at the top is on the top. What's in the middle is in the middle. It's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. So let's start with the top one first. I'm going to fill this with blue. And let's go to the second one real quick. Um, actually, I'm going to skip over the second one, and I'm going to go right to the bottom first. And I'll tell you, explain that in a second here. Is So I'm going to go to the bottom. I want to put a yellow outline around there. So you come down to 
Default, real quick, default is set to, if you click any of these swatches, it's set to the fill. So if we want to add or change colors with the stroke, like the edging, we want to double click in here to pull up our stroke window. So before we can do everything, we're just going to give it a size. I know I want it to be thick, so I'm going to go with 12 for now. Click my drop down arrow, select my eyedropper, come over here, click yellow, click here, and then click OK to see what it looks like. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's zoom in just a little bit here. All right, you can see better. So the reason I came to the bottom is I want to put a white stroke, and that's what's going to be the second one. So, but, you know, our background's white. So if I sat there, I could put 12 points, I could put two points, I'm still not going to see anything. So I want to be able to see how it looks, and if I have to adjust the yellow one, I'll come back and do that. So let's add a white stroke. Oops, and we did 12 on the yellow, so let's start off at four for the white. Click the white, click OK. Yeah, looks pretty good. Probably going to increase the size of my type here in a minute. Um, actually, now to pop, make this pop a little bit more, I'm actually going to add one more stroke, and that's on the top one, the blue. I'm going to give it a nice, thin black outline. You'll notice, too, I mean, you might be like, well, no, hey, this looks pretty good the way it is right now. Adding a little black outline sometimes, it really can make it pop. So I just want to make sure I'm just using the same colors in my palette. It's not really necessary, but, you know, me being organized, I like to make sure I'm using all the same thing. So click OK. Yeah, black's a little too thick, so I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Let's do 0.75. And click off of it so I can see it better. Yeah, I like that. But you can tell it pops quite a bit better than just leaving it alone. So we got Jackson High Tigers. Uh, we're going to add a little more decoration to this to kind of bring it back, you know, just fancy it up a little bit here. So what we'll go ahead and do is let's create some lines here. And it comes automatically with a black stroke. I really don't want any stroke around that right now. So click none, click OK, and we'll fill it with a yellow. And let's zoom in a bit here so we can really make sure we're lining this up the way we want it to be. I want it to line up with, there you go. And then I'm going to use the quick T because I'm going to copy and paste this thing, so it's just, again, it's control C, control V, and there you go, you see we've got two rectangles here. So we'll bring this one down, holding my shift key so it doesn't, there's another little trick, if you want to keep things where you just want to move up and down, you don't have to worry about, or side to side, and you don't have to worry about it, like if you're freeforming it, and making sure things are moving all over the place, hold down your shift key, then click on your object, and it'll stay where you need it to. So bring it down, line it up. There we go. Let's zoom back out. Uh, and we'll zoom back into the type. Okay, so let's add tigers in there real quick. Tigers. Now before I start sizing him, I'm going to actually want to use a different font for this one just so it offsets so it, it's... Rule of thumb basically is like, you know, you don't really want to use more than two different types of fonts in any kind of design. It makes it too distracting. It's just, it makes it harder to read. Two different types of fonts such as this, typically it, it's normal. It works a lot of times. You just going more than two, it becomes distracting. And the reason I want to make Tigers a different font is I want it to stand out and not read Jackson Tigers High. So this way it'll, it'll read more like Jackson High Tigers. So we're going to size them up and yeah, squish them a little bit so it kind of floats in there. Stretch them. Let me stretch them out, get them in there. And before I forget, once I get them set up, I'm going to leave this black actually. I'm going to right click, convert to curves. There we go. So let's, let's go to fit here. All right. So let me select all, I'm going to actually just do, just to add a little more something to it, we're going to select all of them, and let's skew it a bit, just to give it a little more room to it. So to do that, there's a couple things you can do, object, transforms, skew. So 
Oh, again, I must have had that over here on the tabs. A lot of times when you open things already, like Dockers, and you already have them checked, they, they end up over here on the side, but they end up getting kind of squished, and they come down to, like, symbols here. And, sorry, I can't remember every symbol I see, so I never know if it's there or not. So I usually just go using the top bar here to find the things I need. So object transform, let's go to skew. It's playing this early, but normally it's already set to zero. So once it's set to zero, you can sit there and play around with it. Uh, you know, put in whatever you want, and then you click apply. Oh, that's too much. Ah, and I accidentally grabbed the uh, print cut line for the for our main image here. So let's undo that for sure. And go back to our object manager. Yep, grab too much. Click here. Go there. Yeah, now we got just the type. So transformations. So let's you know, let's do 10. See how that works. Yeah, that works. Let's move them up here and make it bigger. Pull it down some. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot better. All right. So. Again, all our files are set up for print cutting. I'm just moving them down a little bit. We'll just nudge them using the arrow keys. There we go. So as again, like I said, we're just showing you how you would add stuff to this. I mean, our print cut files are ready to go. As you can see, the line was already there. You could just, if you just were just printing stickers of this football, that's all you need to do. Just, you could take it and go right now. Now, this does have a cut line on it. The elements that we've added here, we need to add a cut line for these too. I am going to handle the bars and the tigers different from the Jackson High. And here's because what where we need the cut line to be is on the yellow, on this outer edge of the yellow. And to do that, we got to handle it differently than these three. So let's handle the tigers and the bars first. So what you're going to want to do is we grab all three of those, make sure we didn't accidentally grab something else. Yeah, okay. So we'll go ahead and edit copy. Or you do the quick key, control V, and it paste. And we've got all three here. Now, it's giving me a slash mark here telling me that it's not that it doesn't have a fill color. Obviously, you can see it has a fill color. It's saying that it's not the same fill color. So if I do go here and I click on anything, it's going to do it to all of it. So as you can see, the tigers, the bars, all turn blue. Um, actually, I don't want to fill on it at all. So I'm going to just click on the X. I'm going to come to the outline here, actually. I'm going to make it a hairline. And we're going to pick our cut contour color. And click OK. And then, now, remember, like I said, with our images, we put bleeds on this. So this is going to be handled no differently than this. We want to put a bleed on there. Because if this comes out all nice and cut all nice and the edges all nice and crisp and everything, well, we want the same with our type. So to do that, what I would like to do is actually I'm going to weld all three of these together so it's just one curve. We're going to have to weld all of them together anyway. So these, so boom, so it's one curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down to our uh, you know tigers in the bar and I'm going to come over here and add. Because this would be a big image on a 14 by 14, I'm just going to add like a 0.75 bleed, black line bleed on the tiger. So that way when my cut line comes through, I'm not worrying about white coming out. So we're just going to add 0.75. Again, I'm picky. I like to make sure I'm using, I don't know why we that colors down in there. I want black. Click OK. And here, let's go down. We'll zoom in real close so you can see the bleed. Yeah, see? See, that's coming out a little bit. So now I'm not having to worry about white chilling through or something like that. So let's go to fit. Let's zoom back in because I just want to deal with the type here. And we're going to go ahead and add a bleed. I'll just hold the shift key to select both of them. We're going to add a bleed of yellow to our bar. 0.75. Select our yellow down here. Click OK. We got our bleed on those two. So now we need to focus on the Jackson High. So 
All right, so the one I'm going to select for Jackson High is not the top one. I want the one with the yellow outline because, like I said, I want the outline to be on the yellow. Oops. I want the outline to be on this outer edge of the yellow. So I'm going to copy Control-C, Control-V to paste, and it's going to be in front, which is fine. Um, now what we want to do is... Well, the reason we're, what I'm going to show you is here's the reason why. We can't just say, well, hey, let's just fill it with a stroke, and there you go. Because if we do that and we make it hairline, we select our pet contour. So we do just that. Now we only have a cut line around the original size of the type. So what we're going to want to do is this. So it's Control-Z, and you're going to want to come up to click on that curve again. Go to Object, Convert Outline to Object. So to convert the outline to the object, it, just click it, and it'll convert. It's, to, it's treating the inside. Of all the line is one thing. So as you can see, it fills with yellow. Uh, let's actually, Just to show you guys what I mean, let's add an outline around it, and you can see what I'm talking about. Hairline. Uh, we can leave it blank. See, you can see there it came all the way around. So what we're going to want to do is let's not worry about that for right now. Actually, no, we're good. Uh, let's fill it with uh, our cut contour color. Click OK. And put it on the outer edge. Because this is where this this position down here, this will tell you where your line is sitting on the edge. So, you know, look at this white line in here. If you click on the outside, that means this line is going to be on the outer edge of it. Click there, it's going to split it in between. Click there, it's going to be on the inner edge. I want it on the outer edge, and then uh, then we got to handle it another way. So click OK. All right. So here's here's the issue with this. So we popped it out. We've got we do not need these lines inside this K. We want to go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we will break the curve apart, and then you got to just delete pieces, and then weld it all back together again. So to do that, to break it apart, we right-click on it, go to break curve apart, and now you can see my curves just jumped from one curve to uh, 20 curve, 10 curve, 15, whatever. So now we're going to need to go get our picker tool here. Make sure what you're clicking on and deleting. So just click the J, trash it. Uh, now we don't click. You can right click, click delete. See, this is why you got to click carefully because you don't want to delete the important stuff. Click right click, click delete. Delete. I you can sit here and hit the shift key like this and select them, but as you can see, it gets kind of harder and harder to tell what it's grabbing. I mean, I'm pretty sure because I can tell over here. It's grabbing pink, you know, I'm not actually grabbing one of these objects down here, but, you know, instead of doing it over and over again, if you do it this way, just slow and steady, you make sure you're getting the right pieces, like, especially when it comes to these little pieces, I don't want to delete those, I want those to stay there. Delete, delete. Oops, I don't want to go down. There we go. I'm going to go over so I can see it. Delete. Delete. Sorry, it is tedious. Almost done. Okay. All right. So now we want to treat, we want to weld our main outline. And that is already welded. So now we want to merge this back with it. So we select those. And you are going to have to select all of them. Getting these tighter ones down in here. All right. And we can go intersect, create an object from the area where to, oh, not intersect, it's subtract. Yeah. Front minus back. So whatever is in the front is going to be minus from the back. Uh, to tell, or back minus front. Right now, I can tell, let's, actually, let's group these curves really quick. That's just control G. Oh wait, that will them. Ah. Oh, this is where it gets clunky. Alright. I'm gonna make these inside circles one 
object because it's easier to handle that. I'm not having to re-click it like I'm doing right now. So let's just grab them one last time, weld them together. They're one object now. I'm just going to move them to the top here so I know it's at the top. Grab my outline on the back. Nope. That one. Yep. And move it. No, do not want to group it. Move it here. Select both. And then, since I know the holes, I'm going to be front minus the back. Oh. Is the wrong one? Yeah, this is the one I want. Back minus front. I always get those dyslexia. <laughs> so now it's one piece. So it's one curve, as you can see. So now I'm going to do the same thing to high. Let's merge these in here with each other. Oops. See, this is why. All right. We'll weld those together. And we've got... There we go. Oh, the J, that's why it's showing. The J is its own thing. It wasn't merged in here. So I, I'm just going to really quickly, because you're going to have to merge, you know, you're going to have to weld everything together anyway. So just weld those two together. Boom, that's done. That's why it was confusing me. Okay. All right. So now let's just do, <sighs> sorry, this is curl. i got to get, like, right in between there. Otherwise, it groups it automatically together. It's something I want done. So we're going to do those two. All right, where did I, yep, all right, do those two, weld them together, that's back. There we go, and we got our line. Now, again, remember, we got to add our bleed on this yellow too, so I'm actually going to revisit my yellow outline down there and just do what we did with the others. I'm actually going to expand out my points. Uh, so 12, we're going to just do 13. We can type it in. We can do 12.75 to see what that looks like too. So it's 12.75, click OK. And let's go zooming in here, see if that's enough bleed. Eh, I'd probably go a little bit more just in case. I'm better safe than sorry. So just might as well, you know, just make it 13. Click OK. And then take all our curves, zoom out. Oops. It's page. Grab all our cut lines here. And we will weld them together so they're one piece. And there's your cut lines, one piece. So there you go. You got a cut line around everything. You got a nice bleed. Ready to rock and roll. Uh, real quick now, I know in this image we did not have the ability to, to uh, change colors in there. But, you know, it is a factor. That is a factor with every, you know, I mean, when you're playing schools, you know, we make all our you know, helmets, you know, we give them red. But not every team's red. So you will have to change colors. You, with Corel, if you have the Corel suite, there's a couple options on how to change colors. Let's actually, no, we did not pull him out. We need to unzip him first, the bear we downloaded. Let's pull him out. We'll pull out the print cut one. Close it. Okay. So changing colors, what you're going to want to do, there's a couple, there's, okay, there's, you have two options. One, you can change the colors in Corel Photo Paint and then export as a PNG, line back, the cut line back up. That's too much of a hassle. You can actually, if you've got a more current version of Corel Draw, and I think I don't know exactly which version of Corel Draw they added these features in. So, but just try to have one that's like an X, X6, X7, X8. So let's we can close this. Oh, really quick before we do that too, just want to show you after you set all your cut lines and everything. Oh, I got to import it. File new. Here's kind of what it'll look like once it's cut without the bleeds. So let's import. This is what it looked like when it's cut, no bleeds. Now I do apologize, the font is different. They were doing a class on the uh, on the Illustrator side. The font that they had, I could not get it onto the PC side, so we had to go with something similar. But this is what it will look like after you're done and everything's cut. All right, now let's get back to the bear. File open. There he is. Open him up. 
as you can see, he's already got his cut line around him too, like everything else. Control Z. All right. So the two way there are two ways in within Corel Draw to change these colors. That one I prefer over the other. So we're going to do the first one is the one I prefer, which is under Effects, Adjust, Replace Color. Make sure that your the raster image is selected over here, Object Palette Manager. You know, you got your squares going around the edges. And then right now, I know it changed immediately to this. Whoa, oh, okay, how do I get it back? Don't worry about it. You can reset it. So the color we want to change in this image, you're going to use your picker tool under old color. Click that if it hasn't changed. We can hit reset. So now it's the same red as red. Click that. And oh, why is that? Oh, okay. Click the picker tool in here. Sorry. And now I want to change the blue, but here's the deal. I don't, you don't want to go grabbing like the lightest blue. You also don't want to go grabbing the darkest blue. You want to find the blue that's kind of in the medium, you know, all right about there. No, maybe not uh, blue enough. So let's like reselect. Okay, so it's treating these as two different blues. That's all right. We can work with that. So let's just do this. And you can see a change in its nose. You might have to make a selection. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, you can then, uh, what you'll do is you'll go to New Color and go to select the color you want to change. This is a bit more specific. You, like I said, you're going to have to make a selection sometimes to get it out of there because of that. So you might actually, with something like this, you might actually have to go into Corel Photo Paint because I don't think they have like a magic wand tool in here. Um, so let's hit cancel. Uh, the other way to change the colors in there is uh, you can go to effects, adjust again, and then right here is hue saturation. I much prefer replace color because I can be a bit more picky. Uh, hue saturation lightness, hue is the color. Saturation is like the brightness or the less of it. So like, you know, right now if I want to pick blue, click on blue. Um, older versions, you couldn't, you have to hit preview. And you see it's changing the colors there. Now it's not doing that. So go the other direction, go the opposite way. And you just see where it is. I saw older versions of Corel. The, you're seeing the transformations happen right here on your screen. Older versions of Corel will not do that. They, you'll have to like move it, tap preview, move it, tap preview, move it, tap preview. It's a pain. And then, so as I said, hue is, a set, uh, is the color. Um, now, sometimes, like I said, I've gone as far as I can. It only takes me to turquoise. So I go the other direction. You know, I get back to my original blue. It's only really probably going to take me as far as purple. And so, you know, you're going to have to, sometimes, this is why I don't use this method. It's because I'd have to sit here and go, okay, let me push it all the way to purple, click OK, reopen it back up, select magenta, and push it further if I wanted to get it to red or something. So, saturation is, you know, if you wanted to dull the color, you go to the left. If you want to brighten the color, you go to the right. Lightness, I never mess with because the problem with lightness is, as you can see, when it's changing the color, it's not like changing the shade of it. It's not, I mean, like the, the contrast, I mean, like where the high, the lighter it is and the darker it is. The reason I don't use this is, and I go, okay, well, I want this blue. I like it where it is, but I want it to be darker. You wouldn't use your lightness because it does it to everything. It just, I never really mess with it. I'll usually use curves or things like that. So click cancel. And again, that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, let me hold on, pull up the window here to see if anybody's got any questions. Uh, uh, okay, does anybody have any questions about anything we covered? Nothing. Nothing at all. I will say this, that maybe it, it might have popped your head, maybe you haven't thought about it. I will mention this because it was a question asked in another class, in the earlier class, the one on Illustrator that Dane did, and it's a good question, and it's something to bring up, is he got asked, how do we make these bleeds on the, uh, on our, uh, 
on our, all our images. Like, let me open up, I mean, this one's pretty much solid color, so it's, you know, we just fill it in. That's just the way the artist painted it, you know. But let me open up the football again. All right, we're, there he is. Let's zoom in here. So, again, he was asked, like, okay, wait a minute. Well, how do I, as I mentioned earlier, what we're doing is we're taking, like, the first couple pixels on the edges here, and then we're just smushing them out to the edge here. Um, I would actually even show you, since, I mean, nobody's really got any questions, and we had a few minutes here, I could show you really quick. But the problem is I don't have uh, Photoshop on my PC. So, it is, so with that, it is something we do in Photoshop. It is a, uh, you know, we use a certain, they got a certain kind of brush tool that allows us to grab the pixels. We go around the edge and you just kind of push them off to the side to create. So, because you can see here, I guess the same pixels just going straight out to the edging. So, and that's how we create those. So, anybody else have any questions? Just getting crickets, huh? Joe, if you could uh, put up your code one more time, uh, and then we'll yes, take yeah. control of the show from there and uh, return back here. Yep. All right, and here's the code again, guys, for the free month. Thanks for your time, and try out the artwork.